Hi everyone, in this video I'll be talking about bacterial artificial chromosomes. Now bacterial artificial chromosome in contrast to plasmids are having bigger carrying capacity or higher carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity that means the the size of the fragment or the gene of interest it can carry is kind of 100 kb to 300 kb which is huge because plasmids carrying capacity is less than 10 kb i mean if there is anything which is more than 10 kb is cloned in the plasmid the plasmid would not propagate properly so in that respect bacterial artificial chromosomes are specially designed for cloning very big dna fragments like an entire genome of a virus now let's just quickly go over to uh, all the features of the back like any cloning vectors back should also have a multiple cloning site which would have a screenable marker for example here in yellow the screenable marker is lac c we'll come in a moment how this screenable marker work but before that there are other sites important features of the back uh, back vector so the antibiotic resistance which would work like a selectable marker which would allow us to understand that the bacteria i mean allow us to ensure that the bacteria only if take up this back plasmid would grow or otherwise it won't grow because we would grow the bacteria in a antibiotic con uh, containing solution only the antibiotic resistance gene can allow the bacteria to grow so that allow us to get rid of those plasmid those bacteria which has not taken any plasmid they would die eventually now for proper segregation of the plasmid or proper replication of the plasmid there is a origin of replication site and there is a F plasmid par gene and this par gene is specifically important for it's, it's known as partition gene it is important for segregation of the bacterial artificial chromosome we'll talk about it later now let's try to understand that how these screenable marker work so the lag z generally produce a beta galactosidase enzyme a beta galactosidase enzyme can cleave x gal which would create a colored compound now for example if the bacteria i mean if the bacteria is only getting a plasmid where the lag z portion is intact then it would create the x gal it will cleave the x gal and create a blue colored colony and blue color colony would tell us the bacteria doesn't have any recombinant plasmid in contrast if the uh, lag z gene is disrupted by the uh, the DNA of interest that we want to clone then it would be disrupted and as a result it won't produce beta galactosidase and when we transfect into the bacteria it won't produce beta galactosidase so the colonies would not be blue it would be white so depending upon the white or blue colonies we can understand that which colony contains bacteria that has the recombinant construct because sometimes what happens is like there is self ligation so in order to get rid of self ligated plasmid in the bacteria we can use this kind of screenable marker and similarly this kind of, this kind of screenable marker which works in the principle of insertional inactivation could be used in plasmids as well now in case of uh, backs it is a little bit difficult to get the cloned plasmid into the bacteria because backs are huge imagine like there is 100 to 300 kb of dna insert into the back so they are very big so how you can get the backs inside is by electroporation the normal method of heat shock transformation won't work in case of back so you can electroporate and using the uh, using the help of electrical force you can get the plasmid inside with higher efficiency now once the plasmid is inside the back and you give proper temperature for the bacteria to grow the bacteria would grow in number but wait a minute the problem with backs is they are like so big now if you don't have some methods by which you can ensure that the bacteria would like equally segregate the back in each generation then there is a problem in order to ensure that the backs are segregated uh, properly in each generation when the bacteria is growing there is the F plasmid par gene. The F plasmid par gene ensures there is an even distribution of the bacterial artificial chromosome. Now, BACs are always used for large scale genome sequencing. For example, BACs are used in human genome sequencing project as well. 
and here are some overall uh, usage of back or back like uh, uh, cloning vectors first they are used for large scale human genome sequencing project etc they could be also used to clone the whole genome of a virus like pox virus herpes virus and coronavirus you can create infectious colonies that could be used for several other research purposes as well now let's say a disease related gene which is a big gene can be even cloned and it, it can be used to make a transgenic animal like a transgenic mouse and back could be a useful uh, vector in that respect now back has a problem as well like back has the huge advantage because of its carrying capacity is huge but its problem is it's like difficult to transform and it's low copy number now it's difficult to transform that can be overcome by the electroporation method rather than the normal transfection method uh, transformation method now the low copy number can also be taken care of by putting a second extra origin of replication v site now this ori v site would generate multiple copies of backs if a transacting factor known as TRF is transregulatory factor is present. So it would ensure the copy number of the bacterial artificial chromosome is maintained. So in that way you can have uh, you can overcome the existing problem of the bacterial artificial chromosome. So if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thank you.